everybody. Welcome to a video introduction on MIT App Inventor. This, uh, uh, this introduction here is going to go over activity 122 from the CSP PLTW curriculum, uh, which I have here available on uh, this particular uh, window. I also have the MIT App Inventor window open as well. So for this assignment, first, uh, first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download the source files on the top of the assignment and under the resources. And you're pretty much going to have source files for any activity that's dealing with programming uh, or starting with particular files uh, that they may even show screenshots of. So you're going to want to download the resources and extract them. In this case, it's only one file that's inside of it, and you'll see it in just a second. So we're going to be working with MIT App Inventor to basically improve on an uh, existing app and kind of mm -hmm. learn the interface from, uh, from here as well. So there's a couple of videos that you could watch here to show you what this uh, what this app this app does uh, right now, and then what it's going to do. So from here to here, you're basically going to be adding in two interface actually three interface items um, to improve the functionality of the app. So let's walk through that now. So you're going to browse to this particular website here. When you go here for the first time, it's going to ask you to sign in using a Google account. You will need a Google account of some sort. Uh, our district actually uh, provides Google accounts to all the students, so we instruct the students to use that Google account. So if you're from a district that uses Google uh, for uh, LMS purposes, uh, then you're going to want to probably use that account. That will be the easiest thing for you to do. So let's go ahead and um, skip that part and let's go right to the MIT App Inventor um, screen. So here's the screen that, you're, that you start with, and it's the first instructions that it asks you to do is to import that resource file. So to do that, we're going to go to Projects, and we're going to Import Project from my computer. So we hit that, and we choose File. In this case, I have them already in a source files that I've extracted. This is, what, this is the archive that you would see, um, or the file you would see when you extract an archive. Just navigate to where you extracted the files, and don't forget to extract them as well. And then we hit Open, and we hit OK, and it will import that particular uh, project. So you can see here, this particular activity is just kind of walking you through the interface of MIT App Inventor. Let's talk about the screens uh, that we see. You'll notice that on the left side we have uh, palette layout and media sensors and a variety of other things that are available. And by the way, you can beta test this particular uh, software on uh, Android phones only. And you can either sideload, you can emulate, or you can do a QR scan later when you're ready to uh, test your app. So we'll go over that when we get to it. So over here, you got your palette. This all basically is stuff that goes on the user interface. This is how you want it laid out. So some apps, you can have a horizontal arrangement. You can have a scrolling table or even a vertical arrangement, uh, vertical scroll. You can add media. You can add drawings. You can add sensors, because all, all Android phones have a variety of sensors that are available for you to use with your, with your, um, with your apps. And then there's also other options this year. You, we don't really go too much into uh, many of these palette options uh, in this course, but other courses may also use uh, these features that you might be in, enrolled in. Over here we have the viewer. Now this is, you're, don't confuse this with a uh, sort of an interface that you would be using an app with. This only is showing you the layout and where things are uh, on your uh, interface. So for example, right here, this little icon is the slider, one of the slider components that's been added into this particular screen. Uh, this here is a canvas. This is where the user can draw things. And then this is basically a text label. Uh, so far, those are the elements that are on this arrangement. If you'll look over here, and this, you'll see this component screen. This shows what's on the screen and how many different screens you have. There's ways to program what screens go to what options and links and all that jazz. Um, but here, all you have to understand is what they are. Notice how when I click on each of these, I get a different set of properties. That's basically the properties about that component. So if I, so if I click any of them, I can get new sets of information about it. Okay, so we'll take a look now at some of the questions that you're asked in this, uh, in this assignment that's available one, two, two. So you have um, the first five steps or so are just basically getting to this point where you have the uh, App Inventor screen open along with the color chooser imported into, uh, into your App Inventor. So it's first asking you to look at the label one component as shown below on the left. The properties panel will show all the properties of that component. The background color property, for example, is a value of none as shown on the right. So again, when you click the label one, it'll give you all of the properties over on this part uh, of, the, of the screen. 
and it's saying the background color is none. That means that there's no background to this label. If we added a color, we, sh we could click and we could see that we have a variety of color options. Uh, we could make it so that when it shows up on the screen, that instead of having no background, you can have that background instead, the color that you chose. So from there, um, what's, uh, the question is asking you now is what's the value of the text property of the label component? So if we look at the label component, you'll notice that one of the fields is text. Here it is right here. right? And the value of that is what's inside the box. So in this case, the value is drag below to draw circles. It's just basically the text that's inside the field. Okay. So then it's going to ask you to interpret the red slider component and what the property is called, what its current value is, and what does it mean. Okay. So your teacher probably is going to assign this question to you because this is a good idea to kind of use, um, you know, learn the interface. So if I go to red slider one. I can see that there are a variety of, of property fields and all the way down to width. And let's make sure. Um, OK, so it's in a slightly different order than it is on the assignment, color left, color right, max value, min value. So you basically have to just say, what, are, what does all of this mean? Okay, Color left and color right. So if you recall from the video, you notice that the uh, user of, that, of, that, of this app uh, showed a slider that he was able to change the color. And whenever he changed that slider value and drew on it, it showed up a, or drew a circle on the screen based on the radius, of course, of where he uh, dragged to. If you dragged a small circle, it would be a small radius. Uh, dragged a large circle, it would be a large radius. But the slider itself, the left side of the slider was red, and the right side of the slider was black to indicate a contrast as the position. So you can certainly have them be the same colors, but the purpose here is if you slide it to the right, the, the, inter the interface to the right, the, there's going to be more area to the left, so the red will be larger to tell the user that, that you have a higher red value for this particular uh, thing. For um, the other values, you just kind of have to interpret what they are. I'm not going to tell you all of them right now, but just so you can kind of see what, um, you know, what, you're going to, what, what you're going to be interpreting for that particular item. Now, the blocks editor, let's talk, a let's talk about the blocks editor, because you, you do need to use this particular screen uh, in, this, um, in this activity. So on the blocks editor, we're going to select my projects, and we're going to select color chooser, which we're there. Sorry. Let's try that again. I hit the wrong thing. Um, that's ahead of time. Over here, under the blocks section is what I meant to say, my fault. So here we go. That's the block section. So we see that we have very some scratch-looking uh, connectivity going on here. It's not nearly as graphically based, but it, it's got you got the same idea. You basically have a that's overriding. Uh, you have event initializer. You have you have procedures that are followed. You also have um, items and things that happen. And, and you'll get the idea that MIT App Inventor is pretty straightforward when, it's, when it comes to the events you have options for. And you'll notice over here on the left, you have a variety of built-in things. And you also have screens for the blocks themselves. So for example, if I want to set certain values of, of certain items on the screen, this is the area I would go. If I click the label, these are the options of blocks that I can drag in and use. If I go to screen one, if I click that, there's no blocks to use. But if I go to vertical arrangement, there are vertical arrangement uh, items that I can use. And of course, there's a variety of built-in blocks that you would use, including some math checks. You can use logic stuff, true, false. Uh, there's controls for if-thens and flow controls. Excuse me. And there's also procedures. And there, so you get, you get an idea of all the things that are available to you. Uh, and this is a very, it is a very powerful interface. It does take a, a bit of a learning curve. It does have a little bit of a learning curve. So don't worry too much uh, if it's hard to understand at first. OK, so we kind of read through this. You can read through this on your own. But the question here is asking you um, to modify code so the user can control the green content of the circles with the second slider as demonstrated in the final stage. Add a slider component to the program as follows. So, what, so we're going to follow these steps right here. We're going to click on the designer to return to the GUI designer window. So right here is the designer. This is the first screen we started with. And we're going to drag a slider from the palette to the viewer and place it just below the red slider. So we go to slider. We're going to click that, and we're going to drag it, and we're going to place it right in the middle there. So now we have two sliders, right? 
Now the question it says to you is rename the components and change the slider's name to green slider one. So here's the slider we just inserted. You right click this. We rename, click rename, and we're gonna call it green slider one. All right, green slider one. So we did that. In the properties panel, we're gonna use the following properties. Green, black, 255, 0, 127, showing and fill parent. Okay, not necessarily in that order. So color left is gonna be green. Color right is gonna be black. Width is gonna be automatic. Max value is gonna be 255. Minimum value is 127. And the current thumb position is gonna be 127, I believe. Let me just double check those values. Yep, and then visible showing and width fill parent. We're gonna fill parent. I'll explain what that means from the previous question. Uh, and then visible and thumb enabled. Perfect. Okay, so that should be all the items you need for that, uh, for that section. Now we're going to go to the blocks editor. And we're going to choose the variable category and select the initialized global block. So we're going to go now to blocks. We're going to go to the variable category. And we're going to initialize global. Okay, so we do that. Now what's the name? We're going to say, I believe that the activity wants us to use green. Yep, we're going to create a global variable named green. A global variable is one that can be used in any part of the program. You may have encountered the need for global variables in your Scratch projects. So uh, you may know that if it's global, that means any procedure or area of the program can use that variable. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to, from the math category, select the zero block and change its value to 127. Oops, wrong tab. So we go to the math block, and we're going to drag that zero... Oops, I had it. There it is. We drag that zero. And we're going to drag it over here, and we're going to change the value to 127. Okay. Now, find the block picture below. This chunk of blocks sets the canvas component paint color. Okay, so you actually will see on the previous screen, I have this block right here. It's called the set canvas block. And right now, you'll see that it has three values make a list, get global red, and then 127 and 127. This section of the program is actually going to ask us to change that variable. Uh, instead of the second list being 127, we're going to actually get global green instead. Okay, so we're going to get global green. I keep going to the wrong tab there. So instead of 127, we're going to drag that and we're going to take that out. And I'm going to go to variables, and I'm going to the get block, and I'm going to drag that in there. And what am I going to get? I'm going to get global green. I have to change it to that first before I can put it in. It doesn't want me to get nothing. Okay. So we do that. And let's see here. We delete that and press and delete. We did that. Drag it in there. Uh, in the blocks area, find when red slider one position changed event handler shown. Um, we're going to create a similar event handler for the green, green one. So it wants us to basically create a duplicate of this particular block. So this is the block it's referring to right over here in the top left corner. So we right click it and we're gonna click duplicate. That's the quickest way to do that. So we're gonna drag this over here and it's giving us an error because it's now using the same, same element, right? So we change that to green slider instead and we're going to not set global red to that. We're going to set global green to the get the thumb position. So basically, we're now, we now have two sliders that act independently of each other. One that controls the red value and one that controls the green value. So that should be it with that. Now. The next part of this particular thing is beyond the scope of this video, but the next part that you'll do is you'll load this onto your Android device. Most people are going to load this program uh, either by QR scanning it using your companion MIT app, or you also may um, you also may want to connect for a live debug test using the AI companion. Um, you can do that, and then you can scan this particular thing and then this will allow you to live test your app. Um, so you have that option as well, but now you would test it to make sure that you do have an app that's working with two sliders. And then the rest of the, um, the, rest of the assignment, you'll add a third slider, very similar procedure to how I just added the green slider. You would do the same thing for the blue, and then you would add a clear button to uh, make it so the canvas erases. So basically your app would look like the second video that you see at the beginning. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to MIT App Inventor. Uh, please like, comment, share uh, eSums Engineering. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Take care.